Hi, and welcome back to episode two of the world's first replica SX64 complete PCB board kit. Um, right, okay. So on this week's episode, we're going to be installing the CPU board into the SX and see whether it converts it from PAL, oh, sorry, from NTSC to PAL. Um, we'll start it up and check it. I'll show you the screen um, on the front of the SX because that'll have probably gone black and white and rolling around maybe. Um, but we'll have a look at that when we come to it. Um, and I'll show you the screen up there um, so you can see it up and running with the game on it. So that'll be the install for the CPU board. Um, what I want to say first um, before we get going um, is a few updates from last week on episode one um, where I'd said um, that the silk screen on the back of the CPU boards and stuff like that wasn't going to be there. Uh, Rob's informed me that yes, um, it is going to be there and that's going to be there to help the builders um, reproduce these boards when they're building them up. So that silk screen that I was showing you before is going to stay there. Um, the keyboard Gerber file is now complete. Um, so I'm, I'm presuming that's going to be going away. Rob said it's, it's finished, is the Gerber's. Um, so it must be going away for production on the keyboard PCB. Um, so as soon as I've got one of them, I'll let you have a look at that. I have the membranes coming. I have also decided um, that I'm going to put a QR VIC in there as well. So I've ordered one of them. So that should be coming shortly. I'll put pictures up as I'm talking along for you. Um, I just wanted to give a big shout to, to Ian um, as well, which is part of the team with Rob that's done a lot of extensive testing on these boards. Um, really do appreciate that, Ian, for bringing these to us as well um, and checking them boards for, for Rob. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, Ian's also on the I.O. board that I showed you last time. Up in the top right corner here, we have a clock crystal. Uh, and they believe that the clock crystal, the original part up here, is unobtainable. It's just, you just cannot get it. Um, and we believe that the original part came from a DC conversion of a clock radio or something like that, is what Ian said. So, what Ian's done to get round that has made this UA1 clock board, which can go into here like that to replace that clock. Because that clock is unobtainable. You cannot get that clock anymore. It is not there. So thank you, Ian, for producing this little PCB so as a workaround to get that going. Absolutely fantastic that you've done that, Ian. That's, that is awesome. Also, um, I said last week that these were going to be exact replicas um, and nothing's going to be changed on them. Well, after chatting with Rob, Rob I remembered that there was a user port um, factory error. Uh, so I'll put a picture up there for you. On this um, user port factory area, it has a, a pin that's grounded sh straight across. And some of the um, user port peripherals that goes in the back there um, didn't, didn't work um, or it shorted the system. So you can see there, there's a little trace cut. So when these boards come out, that trace will be removed. So as you can see on that little picture, there's been a little trace cut there. So I'm looking at the replica board here in comparison to that picture and you can see up here it looks like they've already removed the trace. I'm not sure, let's just have another closer look off camera let's have a look in there. In fact I'll tell you what, just to test it, just to test it because your traces are hidden under the green screen um, so you can't really see them on, on the replica boards as well as what you can see them on the original. So what I'm just going to do is just put my multimeter on and do a, a buzz test. So in theory if I'm right, that top right pin and the in just one, just the inner one will be connected on the original. So let's see if it is on the replica board. Yes it is. So we can see that them two pins out of that picture are connected. So there will be a trace that needs to be cut in between there, just in between them two pins. 
as in that picture um, and that should rectify that factory error guys if you're enjoying these videos please hit the subscribe and the notification bell for the up and coming videos um, for everybody that's already subscribed thank you very much all your support is very much appreciated it helps the channel um, tremendously and um, if you'd like to get involved we are I've got a Facebook group which I'll post up there we're also on Twitter Instagram and Patreon if you want to come along and support us at Patreon so right this is a CPU board install some of you probably just sat there thinking thinking that is not the replica CPU board well you'd be right there this is an original NTSC CPU board the reason for that is I didn't want to bore you showing you me plugging it all in into the into the SX and speeding up the video like we did on last week's um, so I thought I'd pop that in there um, and then we can bring the SX out and, and show you exactly what's going on and whether that CPU board actually works so if you give me a second I'll plug in the SX I'll bring the SX out here I'll plug in the SX um, and then I'll set the camera up and we'll do a, a switch on and I'll show you the CPU board that's actually installed in there so I've just taken the camera off the tripod for a minute so I can show you there you can see the CRT controller which is one of Rob's replicas um, you can see how that the CPU board is installed as you can see when I showed you on the other pictures so we're all installed in there if I pan over and show, see if I can show you into there can I put you the light on yes so you can see in there that the CPU's installed in that board so you can see down there there's a new clock board which Ian made and that chip that you can see at the top there is your VIC chip and if you notice there's a great big lump of room in between the VIC and the casing for what holds the disk drive so there should be enough room in there to actually add the Kawari board um, so sorry it was a bit shaky but I've taken you off the cam right so I'm just going to move this SX out of the way and get it plugged in and set up so you can take a look of it up and running and I can get this camera back on that tripod and stop me from shaking. Right, okay. Time for the big switch on. So we've got the SX replica CPU board installed. The CRT controller board is installed. Um, I've got a game cartridge here to try. Um, so all there's left to do is, is flick that switch. Um, I know you can only see half of the big screen and you can only see part of the SX screen so I'm going to pan you down for the SX while I switch on it will take a few seconds for the screen to come on because it has to warm up um, and then I'll pan you up and we can take a look at the main screen and see what that looks like and then I'll switch plug the cartridge in and we'll give a little game on Borderlands just to test to make sure that the CPU board is actually running and the sound is working correctly so let's flick that switch guys let's the first power on of the world's first replica sx64 cpu board and you've seen it here first let's flick that switch good sign we've had a pulse from the board we got the light that came on we have got a screen that you guys can't see because <laughs> it's pretty much washed out. Let me see if I can focus on the screen. There you go. So you can see that screen's in black and white. Uh, the reason for that is because it's got a PAL CPU board and an NTSC screen. So I have got the LCD screen coming for that. I'm hoping that's going to come really, really soon. We've got the Jiffy DOS coming soon. We've got the Kawari coming soon. I've got um, a modern 8701 clock chip, um, which I'm going to change on the clock board on the CPU board. So we've got a modern clock chip in there. And there's a few bits and pieces else that's coming. 
So, um, if you just bear with me, I'm going to pan you up to the main screen and we can take a look at what the picture quality is like out of this board. So there you go, the world's first PAL replica SX64 CPU board appears to be up and running. Absolutely fantastic job guys, that is awesome. So we're on our first stage now of converting this SX over to PAL and giving it some awesome extras. Right, so what I'm going to do now is just flick the switch, we'll plug board lands in. I hope the sound's not too loud, if not I'll have to adjust that for you. But I'm going to do that without editing so you can see it's going to crack straight up. So let's do that. Yes, Badlands. Always starts like this, guys. That's awesome. Have we got sound from the SX as well? That sound's coming from the TV at the minute, so I'll just turn the volume up on the SX. There you go. That's the sound from the television. So we have got audio out. Let me mute that sound on that television now. So that's muted, and we'll turn the SX volume up now. Let's see if we can see the sound. Yeah, awesome guys. So you turn the SX one down because it is a little bit tinny for the camera, and I'll just bring the audio up on the TV a little bit better. So, that's up and running. Let's see if the game runs and see how the graphics are. Probably going to do a load of rubbish, so don't slate me for it. <laughs> Am I the red car? Yeah, I'm a red car. Ah. Well, that's awesome. That's awesome. Absolutely awesome. Are we going to lap them? Oh, ow. Oh, what's going on now? <laughs> Yay! So guys, that's the first. So that's the world's first replica SX64 CPU motherboard that's up and it's running. And boy, does it look crystal clear on that screen. I'm really, really surprised. I'm looking forward to putting the Kawari Vic in there. Um, if you've not heard about the Kawari Vic, um, have a look up on the internet. I'll try and find a link for the website so you can take a look and I'll drop that down in the description. Just turn that volume down. So I'm going to try and put um, a link in the description at the bottom um, for these things, for the Kawari um, and the LCD screen. I think everything will be down in the bottom. So yeah, that's absolutely fantastic guys. Um, that little bit of flickering there on the graphics, I think that's the Vic. So I think, yeah, it is the Vic chip. So I'm, I'll retest it and I'll show you again once the Kawari is in. Um, but I'm hoping that's coming soon. Um, yeah. So thanks for watching again, guys. Um, if you've really enjoyed this episode, please hit the like and subscribe and the notification bell for the up and coming videos. So, and we'll see you on episode three.